Well, hello everyone. Welcome. This is our church service today, and it's very weird. It's just me and Jack and Elena and Rebecca and our good friend Jacob here who has been driving um, to get our bakery for us, and he's joining us today, so we're so happy that he's here. And I hope that you are part going to participate with us at home, because we're going to put the words to the songs on the screen, and hopefully you can sing along, because we surely need the Lord, and we need to praise Him and, and seek His face um, as we're going through all this stuff with the coronavirus. So the first song we're going to sing is the solid rock and i believe you should be able to see the words on your on your screen there okay the solid rock Thank you so much for the opportunity to worship you. In spite of um, the quarantines and the advice to stay home, God, we have this ability to connect together online and still worship your name. And we thank you that you are our God and that there is nothing surprising to you, that there is nothing that is out of your control. And so we lift up this day and, and this worship service to you and ask that you would um, be glorified here in what we do today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, please turn your Bible to Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of, the right, of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, Elena. <clears throat> now we're going to sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And I was just thinking, you might even have a hymnal at home. So if you do, it's number 43 in your hymnal. <clears throat> Great is Thy Faithfulness.
so the announcements are pretty much stay home and try to stay away from everybody and so that we can not become sick. So um, we're going to work on something for Wednesday night and see if we can do some sort of a, a youth group um, online like this. Um, so that might be fun, so kind of watch out. I'll be texting you guys and tell you. Um, <clears throat> good, good news, Baptist is not meeting today, and turnaround time is not happening today. Um, maybe we can pray about that because I wonder if there's some kind of a thing we can bring to their house that they can learn their Bible stories still, even though they're not, they, even though we can't come to church. Um, and even though we are not gathered together in our building, we still need to be able to take an offering. So if you are able to um, send in your tithe and offering, that would be so great. You could mail it to the church, um, Morrison Baptist Church, 3400 4th Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55412. Um, you can also give online if you look at our website. Um, a place where it says, what's the tab say? It says tithe. There's a, tithe, a tab that says tithe, and you can do it that way. Um, otherwise, if you have something to give and you don't want to put it in the mail, I will be more than happy to come to your house and pick it up because we will still have to pay our utilities here, and um, we can't do that if we don't have any money coming in. So um, please remember that this week. Okay, so the next song is, in your hymnal, number 354, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, number 354. Another announcement, if you would like to get um, the bakery today, we do have a lot of bakery here, so um, maybe call me after you see Pastor's sermon is over, or text me, and um, we can figure it out, okay? So there is bakery here, and also, you know what, if you have something else that you need, make sure you let me know in case I can help you, okay? Now we're going to sing some praise songs.
merciful Savior.
We're going to read another psalm, and I thought maybe you would like to read it with me from home. So I'm going to read this in the King James Version because I think that's what most of you have. It's Psalm 91. <clears throat> Everybody's been posting Psalm 91 this week. Um, so let's just read it together. If you have, have your Bible there, open up to Psalm 91. And those of you who are here in church with me, you can open your hymnal to the back. And it's going to be number 707, and that's in the King James Version, so we can read it together. So, <clears throat> Psalm 91, King James, or in your hymnal at the back, number 707. So if you're at home, and if you're here, just read out loud with me, okay? All right, here we go. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold the reward of the wicked. I'm sorry. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Because he has set his love upon me, Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. So this is time for prayer, and since we don't have um, Pastor Steve or Pastor Whitcomb with us, I guess I'm going to be the one to do the prayer. So if you could join me as we talk to the Lord our God. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you because you are the almighty God. You are the creator of all things, and there is nothing that exists here that is out of your control. God, we thank you that um, we still have one another. Lord, we thank you for our lives that you've given us, even today, for the wellness in our bodies that we have, God, and the strength. Lord, we thank you for our church building that you have so graciously given to us. Lord, we thank you for our church van. God, we thank you for our members, all of them. God, we are so grateful, and our friends as well. We thank you for our children um, the turnaround time kids that you have blessed us with. God, for our youth group that you have blessed us with. Lord, you've given us pastors who love us and who love your word and who are con committed to teaching us the truth. God, we are so very blessed and we are grateful. <clears throat> Lord, we just pray that you would put protection around us, our families, our church family, Lord, that you would protect each and every one of us from this virus. God, we pray for our whole community, our city, our country, Lord, and, and it's, it's across the whole world. And as we see one by one the things that we have put our faith in, our, our medical profession and our, our own ability to stay well and be healthy and our own ability to provide for ourselves. And one by one, these things are falling away, God, in our government, God. These things are not able to save us. And so we thank you that we can see that because the truth is we know that you are the one who saves. 
God, everything is in your hands. So we humble ourselves before you today and acknowledge that you are the God, you are the sovereign Lord. And we come before you and ask that you would forgive us for the things that we have trusted in that are not you things that we have loved and we've given our time and attention to God. So much of our attention is um, placed on whatever the media is showing us. Um, <clears throat> we don't give you the, the, the amount of time that you deserve. And now we are kind of locked up in our homes, a lot of us. And I pray, Lord, that we would take this opportunity to refocus ourselves and, and realize who, who you are and give you the attention and devotion you deserve. And Lord, may you guide each, each of our days and each of our footsteps. Lord, we thank you for the bread that you've brought in again to our, our church today, and we pray that we would be able to bless people with it, that you would direct us to the people who need it. Lord, for those who don't have supplies, um, we, we ask that you would provide, and, and that you would use our church, Morrison Baptist, Lord, to... Um, to be a healing balm to people who are afraid and um, <clears throat> without hope, God. We have hope. We have the hope. And so we ask that we be diligent to bring this hope into our community, and even to our friends, Lord, that we've never had the courage to tell the truth about Jesus Christ to. Lord, we pray you give us the courage to do it now because if there's ever a time when people are receptive to hope, Lord, today is it. So, God, we pray that you would be glorified in our lives. We ask for your protection upon our whole church family. We ask for healing for anyone who is not well, who's, who's not feeling well or sick. Um, for those who are actually struggling with this virus, God, we ask that you'd have mercy on them and, and bring them through it and bring them out of it, God. We pray that you would stop this virus because we know that you are the one who has the power to do that. So we humbly come before you, acknowledging that you are God and we are not. And we just ask for your mercy on our, our whole world, that you would put a stop to this virus. And, and now as we continue in our service here, Lord, we pray that we would um, focus our hearts upon you and upon your word, and that you would touch us and speak into our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you can open your Bibles to Psalm 27. Uh, in my Bible, it's described as a psalm of fearless trust in God, which I think is beautiful. So, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? When evildoers came upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart will not fear. The war arise against me. In spite of this, I shall be confident. One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will conceal me in his tabernacle. In the secret place of his tent, he will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock. And now my head will be lifted above my enemies around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy, I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, and be gracious to me, and answer me. When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, Your face, O Lord, I shall seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not abandon me, nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a level path because of my foes. Do not deliver me over to the desire of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord.
Okay, so it is time for our sermon, and we do have Pastor Whitcomb, but he's just not in the church. So we have him at home um, preaching to us from home. So uh, he is going to be on the screen in just a second. Good morning, this is Pastor talking from home, and it's my message that's going to be given. Let me start over. Go ahead. I'll just keep rolling. Okay. And I want us to think about Psalm 27. The Lord is my strength and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is the, uh, is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? God is strength in the time of trouble. When we have trouble appear in our lives, we call upon God. We may call upon people to come and help us do things, but God is the strength of our lives, and he is the one that encourages us in, in life. One time my wife and I were out in San Francisco, California, and we all got on board the airplane to come back to Minneapolis, and uh, the pilot came out and began talking to us, which was kind of unusual. Then he told us that we are just going to go uh, taxi back out of the, the airport runway, and we were going to sit there for three hours before we could take off and leave for Minneapolis because the winds were so high that they couldn't uh, land many planes here at the time. We all rebelled and they let us stay there for about a half hour just in the concourse. And then he says, uh, they gave us the light to go, and he says, we'll be there in about three hours. And he, we began to land and as we hit the ground, the plane began to bounce all over. And we were sure that uh, we were in a peck of trouble. But the pilot was strong. He knew what to do. He bought the plane under control and we landed safely and then the crowd gave him a great big applause because he'd done a great job. You know that's what God does in our life. He gives us strength each day. He gives us courage each day. He gives us a mind that is active and he gives us wisdom and understanding. So he is the strength that we rely upon. Someone was saying the other day on TV of all the things that we need to do, we need to pray. We need to pray that God will bring the, this uh, time of trouble to an end. One person that was on the TV said, why would people pray? God doesn't do anything for us. Well, I can tell you many times when I've looked about and there's been troubles and trials, that God is our strength and He is our courage and He is our provider and suddenly uh, we have the courage that we need to carry on because God is our strength. Then he is our light. We need to have light for understanding. When, when I was a youngster, my aunt and uncle lived up on the hillside and there was a big forest along there. And at night I didn't like it because it was dark, really dark. There weren't any... Uh, lights along the highway or anything, but my dad had a big flashlight and that flashlight would light the roadway and so I felt safe going home. That was a light to me. So we have lighthouses that send beacons out into the oceans and they provide pathways for uh, uh, the ships on the sea to know where the, the land is. And so God is our light. He gives us understanding. He says in the scripture that if any of us lack wisdom, we should ask for God who gives to all men liberally. But we have to ask in faith, believing that God will give us the wisdom that we need. And so we look at life and we look at the light that God gives to us. David wrote that the word, the Bible, was a light unto his feast and a lamp unto his pathway. And so he dealt with the light of life and knowing that God gave him the light of life to steer him along the way. David became one of the greatest 
leaders of the Israelite people. And he was going to be able to do many things for them. He was a shepherd boy. He learned how to take care of the sheep. But he became a great leader of the nation. And people have never forgotten him. And so he says the word that they had was a light and a lamp. We need the word for us to have the light that we have in, in life and for the strength that we need. And so God gives us direction and gives us life. Then God says, God is strong and lightful, therefore, why should I be afraid? There, there's times that fear comes into our lives because of the uncertainty of life. Someone said one time that people fear death because they've never been bit through it before. We never had the experience that Lazarus had in the old days where he was called out from the grave. He had to go through death the first time, but he had to go through it the second time also. And somehow he probably didn't have fear the second time because he knew what it was like to go through it the first time. And so we have occasions where things come into our life and we have fear of what's going to happen and we don't know what the end is going to be. We look at our society now and all the hurt that is coming upon our, our country and around the world. We don't know how it's going to end up, but they said, we will get through it. And we have to believe our leaders that somehow we are going to get through it. And we need to pray to ask God to take care of it and provide, provide for us. So we don't have any reason for the fear. We need to be respectful of what is going on. We need to try and be as quiet as we can and stay out of the way and the harm that's about us. But we need to trust God that he's going to provide for us and keep us well and strong. And so God leads us in the paths of righteousness. He leads us in the paths of light. He leads us in the paths of, of knowledge and understanding and wisdom. And he gives us the confidence of the day. And so we find in God the one that gives us all the strength that we need. He gives us the encouragement that we need. He gives us the light that we need. So he is the one that we should call upon. And God is the God who answers prayer. Jesus said, if two of you will agree on anything and you will pray in my name, that God will answer your prayer. We don't know when he's going to answer it. It might be for a long time that he answers. But God says he will answer. And sometime at the right occasion, we get the answer for a need. One year I had to pay $50 of income tax to the federal government. I, I was in a poor situation and didn't make much money and I didn't have 50 bucks. But the day came that I needed to pay that $50 and in the envelope there was a letter from the government and you could tell that it was a check and it was made out to my wife. She opened the, the envelope and pulled out the check. It was made for 50 bucks. She'd gotten a letter from the government because she was in temporary retirement at one time and they upped the salary that they were going to do and it amounted to 50 bucks. So we were able to pay the bill that day. We didn't have it otherwise, but in the time of trouble, God answered our prayer. And so when we look at life, we find strength in God. We find strength in, in praying about things. Asking God to help us and God to take care of us. My wife is ill right now. She has bad knees and they need to be taken care of. And I don't know how we're going to fix them. But I'm praying that God will somehow provide the way for us to prepare her legs so that she can walk again. And we trust God for the timing of it. And then God is the one who says that we should not be afraid. Job was a man that suffered many things in life. There was an event in heaven on one occasion. And the sons of God and men were up in heaven. 
having communion with God. And somehow Satan was there. And so God had an encounter with, with Satan. And he said, have you seen my man Job? And Satan said, yeah, I've seen him. You, you treat him like a little old baby. You just give him everything that he wants. But if we take away everything that he has, he would hate you. And God said, no, he won't. He won't hate me. And so God made a deal. He said to Satan, you can do it, take away everything, but you can't take away his life. So he took away all the cattle. They all died. He took away his sons and daughters. They all died. His friends died. He had nothing, and, and he just set out uh, alone. And yet he had faith in Christ, in God. And so we have faith in God when we see him do those things that uh, come our way that we need help in. And he gives us the help and the strength that we need. And so David saw that God was his strength, that God was his encouragement, that God was his provider. He took on Goliath. And he says, I'm going to kill you in the name of God because you hate my God. He took a little pebble and he wound up a sling and he let it go. And he hit him right in the face and killed him. So he killed the giant that no one else could touch in all of, all of Israel. So God is the one who cares for us. We need every day to ask God to give us guidance by the word of God. Strength for the day. Encouragement for the day. Hope for the future. Knowing that God is going to provide for us. I was coming back to... Northwestern College from the West Coast one day and we took a lone road up in, in uh, Idaho and it sounded like a rather unique road until we got out on a dusty road and you saw no lights, no lights ahead of you, no lights behind you and it was all dirt and for the next 40 miles or so we could creep at about five miles an hour with all kinds of hairpins not knowing that we can't turn around and we didn't know where we were going to end up it was supposed to, except we were supposed to land in, in Thompson Falls, Montana. And then we got down to some dry ground and we could go the big speed of 25 miles an hour. And then one time we came to an old bridge. And the sign said, five miles an hour. And I remember that as I came up on the bridge, that every time the wheels turned, the bridge creaked. And then when you got to the end of the bridge, uh, you had to fall down on a dirt path and then go up a dirt hill. And we got the back wheels off of that bridge and we just sped up the wheel onto the pavement on the highway that was above. We got there safely and for hours, I never thought we'd ever get out of that place, but God was with us and God protected us and God took us along. So God encourages us in a way of life. Some of you are without jobs today. You don't know when you're going to get your jobs back. They may be two weeks, they may be three weeks, they may be four weeks, we don't know. Or your company may say, well, we don't have need of you right now. So where do you turn? You, you turn to the way of life, but you also turn to God, asking that God will give you the provisions that you need. Because God is the one who provides us with strength, he provides us with encouragement, and he keeps us going along the way. God is our helper. He is the one who made us. And he, we are going to be used by God to bring glory to his name. David saw God as a person that he'd never seen before. He'd never seen Jesus before. But he wrote one of the greatest psalms, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall want nothing. He knew that everything he had need of was going to be provided. That slingshot killed the bear and the lions. He took care of them and he used them for God. Then he said, God takes me to the still waters and the green pastures. And then... <coughs> he leads us in the paths of righteousness 
There's a time when we need to rest our bodies. We, we go to sleep for a reason, to gain strength for the next day. But God is the one who provides for us the protection that we need. He watches over us during the night. He takes us out of, of bad places, even at nighttime, if we have to get up and get out of the house. Some people die in those storms. But God many times saves people. And so God cares for us. He cares for us when we have accidents with our car. I had an accident in England one time, driving on the wrong side of the road. I drove on the wrong side of the road because the fellow that was coming toward me was driving on my side of the road. So I ultimately turned to my right to get out of his way, and he turned right into me. And I wondered, as that car was about to hit me, who's going to tell our kids because I didn't think we were going to live. I thought of jumping the curb, but the curb was about two feet high. And if I jumped it, I'd go down a hill and kill kids that were playing. So I thought I missed the driver by going into his lane, and then he turned right in to the side of the car by my wife. And I didn't know whether she was alive. She didn't know whether I was alive. And we slowly turned our heads facing each other to see that we were alive. She had to be in the hospital for a while. And then we came home. But God protected for us. God gave us the strength to, to believe that he cares for us. He gave us the encouragement of the time that we are alive and that we are going to come back home again. So we face the day's problems. And the day's problems say that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So God is our protector. God is our provider. He provides for us day by day. I can't tell you the number of times that my church has had a need for, for money or for some changes in the building. And somehow somebody came along and, and gave us additional funds to be able to do it. Sometimes they did the work for us. And so you see God's handiwork in everything. When we look at life, we see how God directs us. You think of the people over in the foxholes. One man one time was telling me that he was in the infantry, and he'd be in a, in a little dugout, a foxhole. And there'd be two or three of you in that pit. But he says in the morning, somebody was dead. And you always knew that somehow during the night somebody was going to get killed. And yet one would live. So God provides protection even in those troublesome times. Stories told of a man that, that he thought the Japanese were upon him. And he, he could hear their footsteps and he figured they were about six feet from him. And he was in this dugout. He had a few shots left in his gun. And he had a knife, and he was going to fight with them to either be killed or kill them. But then they walked away, and they disappeared. And then about midnight, he decided he and his friend could make a dash for another foxhole. The problem was the moon was out. It was well lighted. And as they dashed across the field, they zigged and zagged so that the Japanese couldn't hit them with their weapons. And they dove across some rocks and into uh, a pit where they gained safety with the American soldiers. They lived to tell about the story. And God took care of them. When we see life, we have to re have reason to believe that God will take us through. God will use us. And God will carry us through the things of life because he cares for us. So when we think about it, Let's ask God to take care of our country. Ask God to be with those who are in authority over us, that they will seek God's guidance and God's direction, that we might see the glory of God work in our lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you, God, for the strength that you give to us. Thank you that 
you are our light and our salvation. That you have given us a life that's going to be sometime in heaven because we believe in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So God, I pray that you will help us this day. May we be encouraged by your presence with us. And we pray, God, that many lives will be saved. They will not die because of this surge of, of the things that are coming upon us. But we might see your power and your exercise and show yourself to be the strong and the mighty one who takes care of your creation. So be with our people this day, dear God. Thank you for each one of them. We pray, God, that they will be guided by your hand and by your wisdom. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to thank you for uh, joining us today. Thank you for coming to our service and for looking at it online. And uh, more, more than likely, we'll have to do this again next next week, I believe. But we'll just we'll just play it by ear. Um, we just want you to know, in case you're watching and you're full of fear and you're feeling hopeless or you're feeling alone. We want you to know that God loves you and that he has sent his son, Jesus Christ. God himself has come into the world in order to um, have a relationship with you. And you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be al alone. Jesus died on the cross in order to cover for your sins so that you can, you can be with God. You can know him. If you're fe feeling fearful um, and you want some hope, we uh, want you to know you can call us. We can talk to you. We'll pray with you. Um, God loves you. Our phone number is 612-529-1316. Have a really good day, everybody.